Hi everyone, welcome to another Skyrim mod feature, episode 50. First up, I want to take a quick look at Alternative East Empire Company signage. Now, this mod is quite simple, but what it does is it changes the normal ship on the East Empire Company's logo to this longboat, which is styled after a Viking or Nordic ship. This mod plays in very nicely if you use something like a medieval overhaul, it just gives you a little bit more immersion in that aspect, and personally I prefer this over the vanilla sign anyway, so I'm actually going to keep this on in my playthrough. Next up I have an armor mod, and this is actually one of my favourite mods that I'm showing in this video, and it's called Combined Nordic Armor. This mod particularly caught my eye because it's a fantastic mashup of armors, and after just recently showcasing the armor mashup mod, this one immediately just jumped straight out at me. And what you get with this is a mashup between the Ancient Nord armor, Steel Plate, and Tusun's armor from the game. And as you can see, it's really nicely put together, and the colors that are with it as well just look absolutely fantastic. And it's actually my new favorite piece of armor in the game. There are a couple of issues with clipping, mainly with cloth coming through the pieces of armour. There's also a little bit of an issue on the neckline of the armour at the back, which just mixes a little bit too keenly with the bearskin helmet. To acquire the armour, all you need to do is head to the forge and have the steel smithing perk unlocked, and you'll find it under the steel section, and it has the same stats as the steel armour as well. It's a really great piece of armour, it's really well put together, and I do recommend you try it out for yourself. Next up we're going to take a look at a weapon mod called the Artifacts of Boethia. And this mod is by Frank Family and if you know the mod author you'll know they're very good at weapon mods. And what they've done is they've brought in four unique weapons from other Elder Scrolls games and also from the Elder Scrolls lore. Now in order to obtain the artifacts what you'll need to do is go to the Arcanium at Winterhold's College and read a new book that's been added there called The Story of the Rissus. And you'll find this book on the main desk. The questline itself is pretty straightforward, markers guide you the entirety of the way. I was level 30 when I tried some of the questline and I did find it a little bit difficult in places on master difficulty so I would recommend, as the mod author does, to either be, be above 30 or between 40 and 50 before starting the quest. The larger weapons that come with this mod are Gold Brand and Elton Brand and they both have a fire effect. Elton Brand also comes in a two-handed version and has a lot more maximum charge than Goldbrand, but takes a longer time to regenerate. Both weapons when blocking will give you a flame cloak ability as well, which is very handy when fighting opponents close up. The Larissa Dagger is pretty much a straightforward dagger, but does supply extra damage to dragons. And Fearstruck, the shield, provides fire resistance, and bashing enemies with it marks them for death. Okay, so next up I want to take a little look at RGX the Red Guard Expansion. Now in this particular video I'm not going to go over much of the quest lines, show you any spoilers from that particularly at all, maybe the first two minutes of it, and basically just scenery etc from the expansion added areas. Now since I recorded this footage, which was a couple of days ago, the mod has made it onto the hot files on Skyrim Nexus, and has had a big release which was today on the 3rd of August, um, to version 1.1 which has added a ton of new things, all new areas, new animals, new camps, new quests and new boss fights etc etc. There's a lot been added in the recent update and most of that obviously will not be covered in this feature. At the moment I would say this mod is probably in beta phase, a lot more content will be added over time as you saw with the 1.1 update today, a hell of a lot of content has been added and I imagine a lot more will be added in the future. For now I would definitely go and try this mod out, load it up for yourself and check out the new world that's been created. It really is a nice place to walk around and explore and again there is a lot of things here to see and do and it will keep you entertained for a very long time indeed. One of the most entertaining features actually from this mod happens very early on. If you go down a particular route with the quest line, you'll actually see sharks in the sea. Now that was quite interesting to see in Skyrim, something I've not experienced before, and killing them from the ships was actually quite fun as well. I don't mean to sound sadistic, but I've not done that before in Skyrim, so it was quite interesting. 
Next up, I want to take a look at HDT Bosma Priestess. Now, this is an armor set that I wouldn't normally cover due to its skimpy nature. However, I really did like the shoulder plate design and the design of the armor down the back. It's really intricate and well done. The mod is actually an import from Oblivion and has the same stats as the Elven armor. It does have a couple of recommended and required mods and those can be found at the top of the mod page. In order to acquire the mod, you can craft it at the forge and you'll find it under the Elven armor category. If you want to take a look at this mod, there is a link in the description below. Just click that to go to the mod page and if you do use the mod, please remember to endorse. Okay, so next up I want to take a look at another DLC mod, and this one is called the Somerset Isle. Again, as with the other mod, I will only be showing scenery from the expansion, and no specific questline content. For me, this expansion stands out quite a bit, because it involves you needing to be the Art Mage of the College of Winterhold. And that questline in Skyrim is one of my favourite questlines. I know it's a little bit trivial at times, but I really do enjoy acquiring that mantle of being the Art Mage. And this for me just adds an extra element into acquiring that role. It's a little bit more involved in terms of questing as well. There is no real markers in this expansion. You will have to work out where to go from reading journals, other books and certain items, and also just fathoming puzzles out for yourself. It really does add an extra element to questing in Skyrim, and I really do actually prefer that over the hold your hand type of quest line that you normally are taken on in the game. There's some really great and interesting places to explore in this expansion, and I'll just go over a couple of the main features that it offers. There is approximately 30 hours of gameplay in this expansion, now that's a lot. There's about 60 plus quests, and this includes 600 plus new NPCs, a ton of new craftable items, ingredients, a ton of new original looking buildings to explore, and just tons and tons of stuff, including a custom soundtrack, which plays very nicely in the atmosphere of the expansion. To see more, simply head to the mod page, there is a trailer on there, and it's well worth watching. Hopefully I've shown enough in this video to get you interested, and if I have, obviously remember to endorse the mod if you use. And last up in this video, I want to take a look at Slingshot in Skyrim, which simply adds usable slingshots to the game. They're all stylized upon the usual categories that you find in the game, so ebony, steel, iron, glass, etc. And they work just as a bow and arrow do. They even have the same animation, which actually plays very well into the slingshot device. Using the slingshot is a little bit more trickier than using a bow. The balls do fly off in a slightly different trajectory, and it can take a little bit getting used to. It's more easily used in close quarters, and actually seems to pack quite a punch in those areas as well. And it definitely offers a completely new element to play in the game. I personally really enjoyed using it, and I would suggest actually using it for a hunter type character. It's a bit more versatile than a bow, and still can pack the same sort of damage. It'd be interesting to see if the mod author can add any more to this mod, but as it currently stands, it's a well rounded piece of weaponry. So that brings me to the end of episode 50. If you've liked any of the mods that I've shown in this video, please do head down to the description and go to the mod pages via the links. And if you do use any of the mods, please do endorse. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.